clear. Evan Root e -Tech. EPA regulations have driven up the cost of stern drives. Evan Root e -Tech engines are not only 100% EPA compliant, they're significantly lighter in weight, delivering superior performance, better handling, and more economical operation. They're virtually maintenance free and leave more room for you and your passengers. Click now to see how Evinrude E-Tech outperforms a stern drive. Ever since only Evinrude invented the world's first outboard motor a century ago, Evinrude engineers have been pushing the boundaries of what marine engines can do. Now with E-Tech, they've reinvented the outboard. They've combined the two-stroke design with things like space-age alloys and smarter fuel injectors. They've eliminated the need to mix oil and gas and created the cleanest engines on the water. No smoke, no fumes. But unlike four strokes, E-Tech sacrificed nothing. E-Tech outboards scream with power. And they're more reliable and easier to maintain than any other engines you can buy. A typical four stroke requires a delicate and lengthy break in period before you can run it the way you want. An E-Tech needs no break in period at all. Run it right out of the box as hard as you like. All four-stroke engines require oil changes as often as every six months. In E-Tech, no oil changes ever. And no need to mix gas and oil. The biggest difference is how much more dealer servicing a four-stroke needs. In any three-year period, a Mercury Verado requires three service trips to the dealer. A Yamaha Outboard requires seven trips. That's seven weekends your boat's off the water. An E-Tech, on the other hand, sees the dealer just once in three years. And then not again for three years after that. And three years after that. I like the concept of uh, not changing the oil. 300 hours, no scheduled maintenance. Dad, man, you that's music to our ear. Yeah, that, we that, don't that punch it. Let's go. A four-stroke engine makes power only half the time on every other revolution. And its belts, valves, and cams create power draining friction. The E-Tech, on the other hand, creates power on every cycle, continuously, with far less friction to overcome. When the dust settles at the end of the day, um, the four-stroke motor just doesn't have an advantage over the E-Tech motor uh, in any way, shape, or form that I can see. And uh, I think the numbers bear that out. E-Tech's computer-controlled fuel injector is the most advanced combustion technology ever designed for an outboard. Making up to 8 million calculations per second, the computer meters the precise amount of fuel for every speed and load condition. The result? More torque throughout the RPM range than any engine in their class. Running rivers here in Alaska, you, you've got to have something that's going to have that snap, that jump, that's going to get you out of the water and get you on plane in a hurry. The faster you get there, the faster you can you know, get your lines out and the faster you can uh, start fishing. And it doesn't matter what RPM you're at. If you're at 5,000 you go to 5,500, you can feel it. It sets you back. It puts excitement back in the boat. E-Techs are designed around a single integrated vision. Evan Root calls it DQR, durability, quality, reliability. DQR means designing an engine that will withstand the worst the marine environment can throw at you. One, we build the e to be durable. We start with a simple, low friction design made of the toughest components in the business. And then we leave out the parts that can give you trouble. We don't have exhaust valves, camshafts, belts, pulleys. If those parts aren't there, they just can't break down. Two, building in quality. BRP is renowned for its attention to detail for building parts right every time. Three, these engines are reliable. E-Techs start on the first revolution. You can count on it. Reliability also means getting all the electric power you need. The amount of amps required by today's GPS chart plotters, radars, and fish finders can easily exceed the alternator output of most engines. Not the E-Tech. E-Tech's V4s and V6s produce a full 50 net amps for all the electronics you want. That's up to twice the available amps you get with other engines. There are no belts to break down, and if for some reason the battery should die, you can continue to run the engine right off the alternator itself. With their lighter weight and advanced combustion technology, E-Techs burn far less fuel than most other engines. How much less? At wide open throttle, the fuel economy of an Evinrude E-Tech 225 is 4.8% better than the 225 Yamaha four-stroke, and 19.3% better than a Mercury four-stroke. At idle, the difference is even more dramatic. The E-Tech's fuel economy is 54.6% better than the Yamaha and a stunning 55.1% better than the Mercury. E-Tech owners all over America are thrilled with what they're saving in fuel costs. 
The fuel economy of the E-Tex and the price of fuel just make them very economical. When I put the E-Tech on, I doubled my uh, gas mileage. Fuel economy on this boat powered with E-Tex is approximately 35 to 40 percent better than the previous power I had. I'm able to run a little bit further than the next guy because they don't get the gas economy that I get. e fuel economy is bar none the best. The tug of war test is a great test for torque because it shows how much power the motor is able to make at any given RPM. Each of these Sea Chaser Bay Runners is identical in weight and configuration, and each is outfitted with a 150 horsepower engine. One is the leading midsize four stroke from Yamaha, the other, an Evan Root E Tech. An independent observer ensures that each engine is propped and rigged to manufacturer specifications. Everything possible is done to ensure a fair test. These are professional boat drivers relying on spotters and maximum safeguards. Do not try this yourself under any circumstances. Now, the drivers line up and wait for the start. Three, two, one, hit it! Here are two engines with the same horsepower, but look at the difference e tremendous torque makes. It literally pulls the Yamaha underwater and capsizes the Bay Runner. Of course, Yamaha's extra 70 pounds of weight doesn't help it either. More weight, less torque. Not a good combination. The 90-horse E-Tech on the left weighs 317 pounds. The 90-horse Yamaha four-stroke weighs in at 387, a full 70 pounds heavier. The difference is even more striking with the 90-horse Mercury four-stroke. It tips the scales at a whopping 411 pounds, over 90 pounds heavier than the E-Tech. We'll mount each of these outboards on identical 17-foot center console boats and compare performance. An independent observer ensures that the boats and engines are configured to manufacturer specs. The e -Tech powered boat jumps quickly and smoothly on the plane. But look at the effect of the Yamaha's extra weight. Its boat is sluggish, and as speed increases, it begins to porpoise. The effect of Mercury's extra weight is even more dramatic. Its 17-footer stays mired in the hole and struggles to get on plane. Even at optimal trim, it porpoises wildly. Compare the view from the e -Tech powered boat with the same view from the Yamaha boat. And now with the Mercury. These boats, designed for the lighter weight of carbureted two-strokes, just don't perform when repowered with heavy four-stroke engines. In any class, e -Tech's lighter weight means better handling, faster hole shots, and more speed. The four-stroke just didn't do it for me. They don't perform. There's too much weight there. A four-stroke uh, on this boat would have been too heavy. I didn't even consider it. You get too much uh, transom weight on there. The sc scuppers are underwater, and you'll take on water in the stern of that boat. The new Evinrude two-stroke e -Tex meet all EPA and CARB regulations. In fact, they put out the lowest emission of any outboards in the world. To find out why, let's head to the Ralph Evinrude Test Center and round two of our competition, where we see who really comes clean. A good test of how clean an engine runs is to measure its carbon monoxide output. Carbon monoxide is a dangerous pollutant, and it can build up around your boat at slow speeds. For this challenge, we're going to measure the CO on an Evinrude E-Tech, a Yamaha, and a Mercury Verado all brand new 225 horsepower engines running at idle. Results show that the Yamaha puts out over 38,000 parts per million carbon monoxide. The Verado puts out over 52,000 parts per million. And the E-Tech, by contrast, emits less than 600 parts per million carbon monoxide. That's over 63 times lower than the Yamaha and a whopping 86 times cleaner than the Mercury. More power, cleaner emissions, better fuel economy. No wonder people all over the world are repowering their boats with E-Tex. We do a lot of repowers here. 90% um, of our business is probably repowers. We gotta get the customer something that's safe, something that's gonna run good, something that's gonna get a good fuel economy, and uh, E-Tech fits the bill. When I repower with the new E-Tech over my old carbureted two-stroke, 
I doubled my gas mileage. It really makes me happy that I can help the environment in that, in that regard. Use less fuel in a normal boating season. Use less soil as well. I like pulling into the dock without a cloud of smoke following me in. They've absolutely converted me. The E-Tech was where it was at for us.